My grandfather used to live at the ravine. One day, they came and took it all away from him. I always wondered why he never got back what was his. But to him, it was just a lost cause. You know, when you think about the history of Chavez Ravine, uh, most people just think about the Dodgers. I mean, I personally grew up going to games. You know, I love going to games, but to me, it was just a stadium with a nice view of the skyline. You know, what I didn't realize, and what most people don't realize, is uh, there was an entire community there. Uh, keyword was. First time ever on a bobblehead. Uh, a replica Dodger stadium. This is probably my favorite. Um, so commemorating, obviously, the 50 years Dodger Stadium has been around. I mean, every Garbage! Of course, today, you know, most people just like to forget that it ever happened. Or they hey, simply up, don't man? care. When are you going to hit up that Dodger game? It's the 50th anniversary at the stadium this year. 50 years of what? Stolen land? Oppression? Come on, man. Stop with that crap, dude. You weren't even around for it. So what am I supposed to do? Pretend like it never happened? Yeah, basically. You know, the story is just so intriguing to me. Um, not just because it's about a kid who's standing up for what is really a lost cause, in essence, but more, uh, you know, that it's a kid who's just trying to do right by his family. How do you even know that you can make a difference? I know I can't make a difference unless I try. Like any movement, uh, if you want to make a difference, first you got to make headlines. Taking back what's rightfully mine. You're crazy. It's a blessing to be part of something like this. It's like a story that that's usually never told, and it's some forgotten history about Los Angeles. The facts around it are incredible. Before the Dodger Stadium came up to what it was today, the Chavez Ravine's 300 acres was considered as an eyesore. July of 1950 was when the people got their eviction notices that they were, they were about to be kicked out for, for the proposed Allegiant Park Heights. Now the homes were consisted of 13-story buildings, um, 160 two-story bunkers, and they had little or no compensation for, for the homes. Um, it's sickening. Paulo Verde to La Loma and Bishop was evicted. On April 10 of 1962, Dodger Stadium officially opened. After Dodger Stadium opened, it's like everyone at the Chavez Ravine was forgotten. And this is what pretty much gives Raymond that drive to keep going and protesting and getting more people involved. Yeah. Yeah, it's a real revolution. Uh, with Raymond, uh, naturally, as time progresses, um, so do his methods for protesting. Uh, there's a scene in particular in the film in which he uh, actually goes into a Dodger game. Uh, filming this was just really interesting because we kept it kind of documentary style. We didn't tell anybody that we were filming a movie. Yeah, that scene is really pivotal because He's inspired then to really throw himself completely into the movement and uh, that kind of ramps up the whole movement in general. But you know, with that, things do get a little bit crazy. You know what Raymond has to realize is the change that he seeks doesn't come in one day. It's always an ongoing struggle. Like the civil rights or women's rights, they're all sacrifices, and, and Raymond's no different from this. He has to see the bigger picture. This is our home. This is our land. Let's take back what's ours. The poor people of Chavez Ravine had their entire lives stolen from them and got nothing in return. They had no rights. They had no defense. 
everyone just wants to act like it never happened, but it did happen. You know? And it just makes you wonder, uh, is this freedom? Is this the American dream? It sheds light on, on the history of Los Angeles that's been forgotten. And the knowledge that we have here on this film is based on fact, and it requires a lot of compassion. Hopefully everybody sees the message. want what's ours, nothing else, just what's ours.